away we go. Gentlemen, it's the Ron Edwards American Experience Talk Show, where our unalienable rights are celebrated. And now, your radio refreshment, Ron Edwards. is Ron Edwards and welcome to this edition of the Ron Edwards American Experience. Got a lot of stuff to cover this day and uh, we do thank the Lord for this the day that he made and we are and shall be glad in it. Yep, 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 yep. Senility or sabotage? We're going to be talking about that. Democrats, fake justice, dopers, doping, and the dopes in charge of our lives or trying to be. What about that? Ukraine on the edge, Blinken warns Russia of a resolute, massive, and united transatlantic response. Hmm. This from a Wimpus Americanus Apologeticus. On freaking believable. If we had strong leadership, guess what? This Ukrainian Russian situation would not be happening to this degree. It would not, it would not, it would not. Neither would the rocket man be firing up a new heavier grade of missiles. Neither would China be ready to take over Taiwan, as they said, right after the Olympics. Legacy media pros overwhelmingly distrust social media news. Hmm. The reason why is because a lot of us are dispersing truth via social media. But Americans say that they distrust legacy media. Absolutely. Well, how about the inflation tax? Inflation means that things cost more, right? So it doesn't matter if it's a, a, a just an actual tax or inflation caused by brutal government spending. That's what you get. You get higher prices either way. You get more economic strain. And if, my friends, if, and I do believe that in within the very near future, if we do not slow down, actually stop this level of spending. As Edward G. Robinson said in an old movie that I don't remember, he said, you're through, you're through, Eddie. It'll be like that for America. You're through, America. America, we better wake up. A little bit of bad news or just disappointing news today. Gasoline went up 22 cents in the last week in Louisiana, according to my uh, great producer, crazy Doug Cushing. Yep, the crazy Cajun, but he knows what he's talking about. Um, another thing that is very distressing today, the uh, Ambassador Bridge between Windsor, Ontario and Detroit. Well, uh, they arrested those truckers who were blocking things up and causing a little, little bit of mayhem. I was in support of the truckers, of course. And this is why I said on my last broadcast, when you do, when you take this kind of action, it's gotta be done in mass. On that bridge, it should have been a million people. And I still say that in the United States alone, at least 200 million people have to stand up at one time, at one time, Truckers, garbage workers, doctors, people from all walks of life. We have to stop, just walk off the job, just say, you know, we're done. People in the military, military, civilian, all of us join together at one time. Police officers, all of us who love liberty. And I, I, I kind of think it's about 200 million of us, at least. And if we were to stand up at one time, like the truckers are standing up in Ottawa, Canada, 
and say, you know what? We say no to your foolishness. We say no to your illegal, according to our Constitution, written by the Founding Fathers, what these mandates, uh, these actions are, are illegal. There's nowhere in the Constitutional Bill of Rights is it so noted that government has a right to dictate to individuals what they should put in their bodies on a regular basis. There is not. Now, if you can point it out, in fact, of my guest coming up after the break, Kyle Warren, the professor of politics, if he can show me somewhere in the Bill of Rights or the Federalist Papers or the Constitution, whatever, wherever, that it is legal for the government to abuse us in this way, then I'll shut up. I'll be done, done, done. But until then, I'm going to continue to encourage Americans and our Canadian friends to stand up in mass, not a few. The reason why they were able to arrest those on the Ambassador Bridge between Detroit and Windsor, Canada, is because it was only a few. Now, had there been a million and they stuffed it to the, to the gills where they couldn't even get in there, there would be no arrests. See, these kinds of freedom movements have to be very large, very massive, so that they get the message that they can't arrest us all. And I say we must do this because, remember during the summer of riots, when they called them peaceful? When those people were burning down black people's businesses in Minnesota? And they were called peaceful. Oh, they're just expressing themselves because they're angry over the uh, the death of a crack addict named George Floyd or whatever kind of an addict he was. If it wasn't crack, sorry. But anyway, the fact of the matter is he was addicted to something. And they burned, tried to burn down America because of that. Now, we're trying to save our very lives. We're trying to save our liberties. We're trying to save our unique nation way of life. And they want to come after us like, holy moly, like with, with fangs gaping. Same thing in old Canada. They're just standing for freedom. And they're being treated like, they're, like they are the horrible criminals that are being let into the United States in mass through our southern border. Do you think those 190 nations around the world are letting are, are letting out their best, that they're, they're sending their best over here? No, they're sending their dregs. Most of those nations, in some of those nations, the majority of their populations are all dregs. Dregs of society, in America they're called dregs of society. And some of those nations are drag societies. That's all. That's it. An uncivilized beings. One step above monkeys as far as their behaviors. And they're sending them over here in mass to, to live and breed with the permission of the most powerful government in the world, the United States of America. Why? Because this government has jumped the shark. So it's an old Hollywood term when a show has just gone off the rails and uh, it's no good anymore. And that's what has happened to the United States government. It's no good. It has to be cleaned out. And it can only be cleaned out if it is done from a massive 200 million American, not only march, but at least a 21 day protest where we do nothing, we, we, we move nothing, we don't go to work, we say stop, stop the madness. Because here's the thing, if we don't do anything, we're gonna lose everything anyway, and we'll lose it permanently. I'd rather lose something now in an, in an inconvenience for the fight of liberty, which can quickly be, and things can be quickly restored while everything's in, still in place. But if we do not make a, a, a massive stand now and everything is worn down, everything is beaten down in the same manner that happened in Venezuela, those people didn't stand up in mass. Nope. 
And when they tried to, it was too late. They waited until it was too late. They were already starving. No, we have to do it now. Now, 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 or never. I'm Ron Edwards. You're listening to the Ron Edwards American Experience. Heavens to Murgatroyd. It's the Ron Edwards American Experience Talk Show where our unalienable rights are celebrated. My name's Joe Biden. I keep forgetting I'm president. I keep forgetting I'm president. Constitutional Grounds, the hot air roasted coffee that produces a smoother, richer, healthier, and less acidic coffee. Our unique hot air roasted coffee has a most delicious taste everyone is raving about. Because you want the best, Constitutional Grounds is the coffee you want in your cup. Simply go to theronedwards.com and click on to the Constitutional Grounds coffee display to make your purchase and to be sure to use the RE20 promo code and you will receive a 20% discount. Remember, Constitutional Grounds, the coffee you want in your cup. Nobody wants to get ripped off, broken into, or robbed, but nobody wants to pay a lot of money to have their home protected either. I've got an offer to tell you about to provide home security for your home for less than a dollar a day. For real, with no installation or equipment charges. And this is from a company rated number one by a leading consumer research company. According to the facts, most of you won't even call unless there's a burglary in your neighborhood or something bad happens. So let's give you a reason. Save money. For less than a dollar a day with no other costs, you can get your home secured. Plus, get a lifetime equipment replacement warranty. You need protection for your home. Call the Home Security Hotline right now. 800-430-6715. That's 800-430-6715. Come on. You watch the news. Be prepared to pay more taxes. Then, if you owe back taxes or haven't filed in a few years, get ready. The IRS, the largest collection agency of the world, will be coming after you. With the power to collect taxes by any means they want to. Hey, they can freeze your bank account, your passport, even padlock your business. Oh, good times. Look, if the IRS claims you owe them 5000 or more in back taxes and they're coming after you, don't panic. Call my friends and get a tax lawyer first. Their job is to negotiate with the IRS and save you money. They're experts at it. That's all they do. And you can trust them. In some cases, they have reduced a $50,000 tax bill to less than $1,000. If you owe the IRS $5,000 or more in back taxes, call now for a free consultation. 800-908-6084. 800-908-6084. That's 800-908-6084. This is Kyle Warren, the professor of politics, and you're listening to The Ron Edwards on The Ron Edwards American Experience. Yes, you are. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Yep, that's all we are, ladies or gentlemen. That's what God said. But anyway, you're listening to The Ron Edwards American Experience, and... uh, you know something, folks, uh, we, uh, well, the federal government collected a record um, tax uh, collection amount uh, through January. Get this, one trillion five hundred sixteen billion nine hundred and fifty two million dollars from you and I and all the rest of us. So what in the hell are they doing with the rest of it? Why do they say that there's not enough money for the border, but yet there's always money to spend on goofy studies, spend on illegal border crossers to keep them fat and fat and happy? Well, let's talk about this and other things with our special guest today. His name is Kyle Rohr Warren, and he is the professor of politics. He's got a great talk show. Very, very intelligent individual. He's also uh, a regular contributor on Captain's America Third Watch overnight on the great Salem Radio Network. Hello, Kyle, and welcome to the Ron Edwards American Experience. Well, thank you, Ron. Great to be here. You know something? I don't know if you heard me. I was talking about this record amount of uh, tax collections. And, you know, the big question is, what in the hell do they do with all this money? They continue to need more and more and more and more. And yet they're doing less that is good for the country. What say you? 
Well, you're exactly right, Ron. Um, unfortunately, and especially just recently, we're finding out that in some ways they're spending money evidently on drug paraphernalia, crack pipes, at least they want to, um, because they think that that's somehow a solution or something that we should be spending our money on. But in the larger picture, of course, yes, people do wonder, you know, with the record tax collection that, that has been made, why is it that the government continues to have to ask for more? And one of the reasons, I think, is that especially the far left and the liberals in, um, in the Congress and so forth, certainly the White House, they believe that the government is the answer to everything. And everything is a funding issue. Everything is a special interest issue. Everything is a government program. When in reality, typically, communities can take care of issues much better than the federal government can, or even even the local governments. Many times when it comes to uh, issues of helping people, uh, you have uh, faith-based organizations, you have churches, at least that's the way it used to be, that people would pitch in and help one another. But every single thing now, government is the only solution, and the thing that they want is more money. You're right, sir. Uh, they want more. They want more of our money because they understand that money is power, and the more wealth they take away from us, the less power we have. I think uh, the, the taking of the money is an end road. It's a road to an end, and that is ultimate control over all of us, we the people. You know something? The United States government, Kyle, is very brutal. They like to pick on innocent Americans while facilitating foreign law breaking and foreign law breakers within our borders. I'll give you an example. Uh, there's a gentleman named Tom Caldwell. We had him on the show very recently. And he was one of those who was um, locked up because he happened to be in Washington, D.C. on January 6th. Now, mind you, Kyle, like myself, who was also there, he never got into the Capitol. I think by God's grace, I, I wasn't rounded up uh, or none of the people that I was with was rounded up. But here's the thing. This guy never got into the Capitol, not never got to the steps or anything at all. Yet, when he got back to his Virginia home, about three in the morning, these stormtroopers came through his door, snatched him up, chained him up, and threw him back, you know, threw him in, a, in, a, in the paddy wagon, took him to jail, kept him in a very... A uh, humid, cold, dank cement room for days on end, 46 days, I think, and beat him. One day he was kicked in the groin until he collapsed, he, until he just not fell out. Um, and the only reason why he got out because he, he was having uh, these seizures and he would have died. Now, get this, Kyle. When he walked, when he was brought to the jail, he was able to walk. When he left, he couldn't walk. He had to be rolled out in a wheelchair. Now this is what, in what I call the American Gulag there in Washington, D.C. And mind you, he was verbally abused every day because of his belief in God and, his, and, he, and the fact that he liked Donald Trump. And the abusive things that he said, I cannot even re, that, that they told him, I can't even repeat on the air because if you know if the show was only on internet it wasn't uh, rebroadcast on some radio stations i i could probably tell you what they said but i mean just use your imagination what what i mean what how does something like that affect you sir as a fellow american well one of the things um, ron that uh, that you mentioned earlier about our bill of rights uh, you know our founding documents you know that there is nothing in there that says that the government can really abuse people well, one of the things that, of course, is part of our founding documents is the idea that you you can't be subjected to cruel and unusual punishment. And so certainly, no matter who it is, no matter what they're accused of, um, in this country, we're supposed to not go down that road of cruel and unusual punishment. Not just punishment levied down from a judge, you know, to be cruel and unusual, but, and, but uh, cruel and unusual treatment while in custody. And I think, Ron, that one of the things that the American people would be disgusted about is these kinds of things happening. What happens, though, is in the media, you get a narrative forming that somehow, you know, it's okay. It's okay because, well, they were there on January the 6th, and everybody has the right to due process and so forth if they're accused of something. But the narrative is that 
um, somehow these people are less than. Um, or it just even goes back, who was it, one of the, was it De Niro who wanted to punch Trump in the face or something like that? That was okay. It was just, we're just talking about doing violence, but that's okay if it's against Trump or Trump supporters or things like that. And that's been a, a real, that's the same thing as demonizing the police, for example. Yeah, I remember when um, Way Out Water said that you could get into their face and if they're at the gasoline station or wherever. Yeah, she also right. promoted uh, getting physical. You know, State uh, Representative Susie Pollock of uh, Missouri's 123rd District has just introduced House Bill 2649. Now, the Missouri Save Adolescents from Experimental in Experimentation Act to protect minors from harmful so physiological gender transition procedures. Missouri is the fifth state to introduce a SAFE Act this year alone. Uh, the uh, Missouri has joined Washington Watch to discuss the purpose of the bill. And uh, it, um, it's, 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 it's terrible that this kind of thing is going on, but it's very heartening at the same time that at least 21 states now have introduced bills prohibiting gender transition procedures on minors. And I, I'm happy about that, the 21 states, I would like it to be more, uh, and I'm sure that it will be. But it's a shame, at the same time, Kyle, it is a shame that we even have to go through this. God created male and female, that was it. I mean, until very recently, we were fine with that. And then now here we go. What, what say you? Well, you know, Ron, I, I, I think that when we you know, see what's happening um, to minors it's in this particular case, uh, if, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, it would be that the, these minors could go through these procedures with, without, you know, the permission of their parents, basically, or, or outside of the, of the, of the parental uh, relationship. Um, and so one of the things, of course, that parents are charged with, <laughs> they're charged with protecting their, their kids. They have to be able to, um, you know, because a lot of times young people are not in a position to make those kinds of decisions. You know, when, if adults can kind of do whatever they want to do, or, or, you know, overall, I mean, that's, that's part of being in a free society. But one of these things that seems to be designed is to promote um, these these uh, these issues for for kids, um, and uh, unfortunately, it, it it can be very very harmful, and it takes parents out of the loop, um, and that's uh, that's something that degrades our society rather than builds it up and, and takes away the foundations. Absolutely, Kyle, hold it right there, um, and uh, we're going to catch you on the other side of the break, folks. You're listening to the Ron Edwards American Experience. We'll be right back after this. You're listening to the Ron Edwards American Experience. My name's Joe Biden. No man has a right to raise a hand to a woman. And so we have to just change the culture and keep punching at it and punching at it and punching at it. I'm cuckoo, I'm cuckoo. <laughs> just when I came to the United States Senate 120 years ago. I promise you, the president has a big step. I mean, he has made clear that, uh, 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 my name is Joe Biden. I keep forgetting I'm president. I keep forgetting I'm president. Constitutional Grounds, the hot air roasted coffee that produces a smoother, richer, healthier, and less acidic coffee. Our unique hot air roasted coffee has a most delicious taste that everyone is raving about. Because you want the best, Constitutional Grounds is the coffee you want in your cup. Simply go to theronedwards.com and click on to the Constitutional Browns coffee display to make your purchase and to be sure to use the RE20 promo code and you will receive a 20% discount. Remember, Constitutional Grounds, the coffee you want in your cup. You're listening to the K-Star Talk Radio Network, broadcasting truth around the world. How will history reflect upon the massive truck driver freedom blockade in Canada and the United States? Hello, I'm 
or Ron Edwards. On today's page from the Edwards Notebook brought to you by Constitutional Grounds Coffee. For more months than I can remember, I have been telling my fantastic audience members on my popular talk show, The Ron Edwards American Experience, and anyone else who would listen, that we the people must massively rise up and push back vigorously against the tyrannical toads in government who seek to control our lives. Also against the government and Dr. Nason system that seeks to continue making dullards out of generations of Americans and the Obamacare-dominated medical care system, which is proven to be more poisonous than beneficial. My friends, the trucker freedom fighters have set the tone and have shown through their brave effort that we can turn the tide and win back our God-given unalienable rights. But we must follow their bold effort with an even greater measure of resolve to not let up until victory is assured and sustained. And then I believe that history will look back favorably on we, the refounding fathers of this sweet land of liberty. I'm Ron Edwards. For Constitutional Grounds Coffee, simply go to BlueRidgeCoffeeCrafters.com. Ron Edwards, the new voice of America. If you're taking a calcium supplement, it's probably not doing what you think it is. That's because you still lose bone density with traditional calcium supplements. That's where calcium from algae comes in. Algae Cal Plus doesn't just stop bone loss. It's the only supplement ever shown to increase bone density in clinical studies. That's right. Algae Cal Plus increases bone density, even if you're in your 80s. That's because your bones need more than just calcium and vitamin D to stay strong. There are actually 13 minerals and 3 vitamins needed to build healthy new bone. And Algae Cal Plus can take... Would you rather have wireless on the most reliable network nationwide or unlimited with 5G for $30 a month per line? You don't have to choose with Xfinity Mobile. Wireless so good it keeps one-upping itself. Most reliable based on Roots Metric U.S. report. Results vary, not an endorsement. $30 per month per line when you get four lines. Screaming on Peacock. It's the girl's trip of a lifetime. Look at this water. We're going to give them something to talk about. Seven iconic housewives from four different cities. Oh, my God. Vacation at Turks and Caicos. It's a party now. And there's no party like a housewives party. I don't give a f You're not a girl's girl. Why would you say that? Find out what happens when the forecast brings sunshine and a whole lot of shade. You are so self-absorbed. It's crazy. The Real Housewives Ultimate Girls Trip. All episodes streaming now. Only on Peacock. Contains all of them, and it's proudly made in the USA. Your calcium doesn't increase bone density. Algae Cal Plus does. Talk to one of our bone health consultants today and see how Algae Cal Plus can start increasing your bone density. Call now. 800-418-2340. That's 800-418-2340. The Ron Edwards American Experience. The talk show that celebrates America and reminds everyone she's worth fighting for. Join me, host Ron Edwards, and also don't miss a daily page from the Edwards Notebook Commentary. Right here on K-Star Talk Radio Network. Liberty Works Radio Network. The last frequency. Ron Edwards, the new voice of America. Back. I'm Ron Edwards. Thanks for joining me this day on the Ron Edwards American Experience and something that is not a brand new thing, spying. Yep, yep, yep. Special Counsel John Durham finally got something done. Now he's been investigating the origins of the Russia Gate hoax for the past year. He confirmed in a court filing just a couple of days ago that former President Donald Trump was illegally spied upon by associates of Hillary Clinton in order to delegitimize his election victory and presidency. It's amazing how lies are used to delegitimize something that is true. In the filing which was obtained by the Washington Examiner, Durham said that he has evidence that technology executives known to be former Neurostar Senior Vice President Rodney Jeff or Joffe worked with indicted Clinton campaign lawyer Michael Sussman to exploit internet traffic data and access dedicated servers for the executive office of the President of the United States and more. Now this makes Watergate 
look like, I don't know, a Boy Scout outing. And I've said for a long, long time that Watergate was not that big of a deal, technically. It was a break-in of one office. Boom. It was wrong, but and it was wrong for it to be uh, covered up. But I do not think that Richard Nixon should not has, have been as trashed to the level that he was. But then, I again, I find it amazing that something much worse is being totally ignored by the dragon media. And Mrs. Clinton gets to skate free once again, and she's even thinking about running for president. God forbid. What say you, uh, Kyle? Well, yeah, that's right, Ron. You know, what we're finding out about this, uh, the infiltration into the Trump Tower servers and then into the White House, uh, uh, connections and so forth. This is really, really big. And, you know, th- I, have, I hate to say this, this is, goes way farther than Hillary Clinton wiping her server with a cloth. You know, that whole dumb thing that she talked about with reporters trying to make light of uh, her email issues and this kind of thing. But this is serious stuff. And it shows just how serious these people really are about, because you mentioned earlier about money and power. Well, they're serious about power. They're serious about thwarting what the American people wanted. You know, they, they got stunned that the American people rejected Hillary, you know, from their perspective, that they rejected Hillary and they chose Donald Trump. And they, you know, come hell or high water, they were going to do whatever they could uh, in order to delegitimize his presidency. And somehow that was okay because, it went, because, because he was Trump and uh, somehow, you know, these, um, these policies and so forth that people wanted, they were, they were just, you know, completely against what the far left liberal uh, establishment wanted. But the more we find out, and yes, the fact that Durham is now uh, coming up with these things, this is going to be a real bombshell. Now, if Hillary does think that she's going to come out and run again, well, this is going to be front and center. I don't know that they're going to be able to squelch it as much as they as they possibly think they can, um, because it's going to be it's going to be a street brawl in order to uh, you know if she comes back and and thinking that you know because they may be anticipating that Trump may try to run as well and they may be setting up a grudge match, but I think they got another thing coming politically because of all these things that are coming out. You're right, and the thing is, Trump has history on his side when you think about the accomplishments on under his administration and if you look at the world at large during his short time in office things were getting better things were improving economically we were getting along better with uh, nations around the world um xi jinping even respected donald trump you had um, kim jong-un respecting Donald Trump to the point where he said, I don't know if you remember this, Kyle, um, soon after Biden, the, the Biden regime was installed, um, um, Xi Jinping, no, not Xi Jinping, Kim Jong-un wrote a letter in, in which he stated that he respected and liked Donald Trump because at least Donald Trump approached him like a man who you, whom you could trust what he says and he means what he says. But on the other hand, he said he had no respect for Joe Biden. Why? Because Joe Biden is a traitor to his own people. This is from Kim Jong-un and this is what we have to put up with the American people, a traitorous president who was trying to turn this country into what Donald Trump called an asshole. How do you like that, sir? <laughs> well, one of the things about somebody like a Donald Trump is that, you know, he is used to being a leader. He's used to getting things done. And in, I think in many ways, President Trump's perspective coming into office was the, the idea that why are all these problems still following us 30, 40, 50 years on, you know, and sometimes even longer you know, why is the can continuing to be kicked down the road? Why don't we solve problems? Because I think from his experience, just briefly, I think from his experience, when you're building a building, you can't keep kicking the can down the road. You actually have to solve the problem or the building doesn't get built. You know, it's just a whole different sort of 
uh, almost, you know, almost uh, American way of looking at things for people that have to get things done in the real world. But these politicians, like Joe Biden, uh, who's been around for 50 years and done nothing and exacerbated a lot of problems, um, you know, they have a whole different way of doing things. And when they approach a world, somebody on the world stage like a Putin or like a Kim Jong Un or like a President Xi, I think they do have that respect because they sense it and they see from Biden and the others that it's just more of the same. And no, they they don't respect them. Absolutely. Well, speaking of respect, um, Kyle, the professor of politics, I don't know which way you chose uh, concerning the, the shot. And I don't, I don't care to know it's none of my business. It's your personal choice. Believe it or not, it's your personal choice whether you decide to take the shot or not. Oh, that's the way it should be. Now, or, and also wear a mask. If you wanna wear a face diaper all the time and ruin your health that way or not, it should be your personal choice. Now you have Trudeau demonizing unvaccinated protesters you have people in the Biden administration demonizing those of us who choose to, you know, at least want things to remain uh, up to the, to the individuals to make that choice. This is not a situation where, oh my God, it's not, it's not like leprosy, where if you walk by someone who's unshot, that hasn't received the shot, you're not gonna go get sick. And by the way, Kyle, did you know this? I'm sure you're aware that there's a chance that you can get sick if you get around a bunch of people that took the shot because their bodies are emanating these spike proteins which bring about harm and people have caught the uh, corona china virus that way so it's 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 a gotcha situation either way but it comes down to personal choice and if we allow the brutal government to get away with forcing what they want upon us concerning the shot or the jab, we're done. What say you? Well, I, I, I think you're right, Ron. You know, I think a lot of people see this as a, as a personal choice. One of the things that, that is, that I think there's a couple of things going on here. Number one, you've got the notion of public health. Well, it's a public health issue. And so this is why we have the mask mandate. It's a public health issue. This is why we're issuing the vaccine mandates. Um, and they're trying to do these kinds of things under the guise that the only the government again can can protect you and i think that what happens is that can morph into just about anything else because everything somehow will become some kind of a public health issue that's one of the reasons i think they want to have the single payer programs and so forth because they have to administer all the things about public health and safety and then they can regulate your life even more so Oh my goodness! Well, we see that you uh, you're eating too many potato chips, and so well that's a public health thing because we we'll have to send you to the hospital. We don't want to pay for that anymore, and on it goes. So they just want to run your life, and the idea, of course, of getting the getting the vaccine, as it's called, and we know it's not a true vaccine in the sense because you can still you can still contract uh, COVID, um, but. Um, the idea of getting that to hopefully lessen the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the disease if you do get it. You know, people, people can look at that and see. But the idea is that if you're going to mandate it for everybody um, and, and without, without taking into account natural immunity, without taking into account, oh, I don't know, maybe your own doctor who kind of knows about you and your health and whether or not you should have this, uh, put into your body at this time? Should it be now? Should it be later? Should it be never? This is the kind of thing that we're lacking here because it's become a political issue. And also the other thing that's going on here too, Ron, is that it divides people. It makes people um, the enforcers. It makes them feel as though they're part now of the authority figure. I'm telling you to put your mask on or you can't come in my house unless you have this or you can't come in my business or you can't come to school or you can't do whatever. And it, it, it divides people out and they don't understand that if we're fighting each other, we don't see the larger issues that can come down on top of us like a hammer. Yep, it's called divide and conquer. In fact, um, uh, both for Thanksgiving and Christmas, uh, my wife and I were disinvited from family gatherings because of the shot issue. So we know firsthand of which you speak.
Well, there's a um, a situation. Well, today, you know, it's Super Bowl time, and um, it used to be a time. Um, Kyle, not long ago that uh, you would catch me watching the Super Bowl. I mean, it would be like, almost like Christmas. No, I won't rate it with Christmas, but a, a very happy time. And I couldn't wait until kickoff. Because, you know, football is my favorite game uh, to watch. Um, but guess what? Just like I haven't watched an NFL game for years, ever since uh, Callan Kaepernick took the knee, um, I won't be watching the um, Super Bowl today. And not only because of the knee situation and the political correctness uh, under uh, this current um, leader, if that's what you want to call him, Roger Goodell, oh, what a loser. Um, Pete Rozelle must be spinning in his grave when you, when you consider the political correctness nature of uh, the NFL today. And sports used to be something that represented morality, upward mobility, unity, those kinds of principles, and you were a better person for having played sports. Now, you've got the Negro Thought Police, you've got the white socialist pigs. You, I mean, they're all in there, and they have finally gotten into the point where sports is now itself part of the divisiveness of, of, of the political spectrum here in the United States of America. You have a guy uh, just a few days, several days ago, who now wants to sue the, well, he is suing the NFL for racism. Now, this is a guy who was probably going to get one of three, three open NFL coaching positions. And he goes around and sues the NFL. And the other issue is that, well, there's not any black leaders, uh, black ownership. We're, we, we, we want black owners. Well, Kyle, there's 700 um, billionaires in the United States. Guess how many of those 700 billionaires are black? Just, you got a quick guess? How many? Seven. Okay. okay. So there's not a lot. So uh, Byron Allen, who's worth about four hundred million, he's a, a, a comedian and talk show host. Um, compiled his money. He was very smart, you know. And, you know, not very good at what he does, but he was very smart with investments. And now he's running around saying, "I want to be the face of a franchise. You got to have a black owner. You got to have a black owner." Well, seventy percent of all the players in the NFL are black. Then you have a situation where. Um, I would say 60% of them are, are anti-American, leftist, and they don't promote anything that is good for the black community. It's all about symbology. They want, they, they push for these symbols. Oh, a black coach and everything will be much better. Oh, um, a Martin Luther King holiday. And we'll feel better about ourselves being black Americans. Nothing about concrete measures and how to improve the quality of life, the family, and things of that nature. And things continue to, to get worse. What say you? Well, you know, Ron, I think that a lot of times the, the far left, the, the liberal mindset is only concerned with appearance and messaging. They really believe that messaging is kind of the answer to, to everything. Uh, to simply be able to say, oh, we have an African American, um, uh, you know, a ball club owner, uh, and, this, and like you said, suddenly, suddenly that makes everything better, as opposed to having things organically progress, which in, in many ways they were, and, and especially after the civil rights movement in the 1960s and with Dr. King and so forth, you know, a lot of people grew up that are now in their 50s. And they grew up in the in the uh, in the America that that had the civil rights movement, America moving in the right moral direction, um, and people were looking at each other as people. But now, in just these very recent times, especially over the riots in 2020, everything has to be based on identity politics. Everything, no matter if your ethnicity, your race, your color, whatever it is. You can only think a certain way. You can only like certain things. You can only vote a certain way. You can only, in, in other words, and if you go off that, that, for lack of a better term, reservation, if you're black or white or whatever, then suddenly you're, you're straying into some weird area. And what happens is that's the divisiveness. And you mentioned about sports. 
you know, it's what's happening in our society now is there's nowhere you can turn to where that political division, the racial division, the people ginning up race hatred against one another, you can't go anywhere without running smack dab into it. If you're in school, if you're at work, if you go to a sporting event, if you go to a concert, if you go whatever it is, and it, it's 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 stressing people out to so badly that it's that it's going to tear our society apart literally. And what I hope, and especially when we had Martin Luther King Day, the idea of judging people by their character, not by the color of their skin, that's now laughable to the liberals. <laughs> you know, they really just. They, they can't get behind that anymore. But, but regular people do, and people from all, all walks and all races, they, they do that. It's the people that are trying to continue this division uh, for, for some ulterior motive, and that is to break down the society, put something else in its place. The other day, AOC says capitalism is not viable. It's not, it's not redeemable, I think is what she said. You know, so, so where do you go from there? Well, you've got to collapse the system. You've got to put something else in its place. I mean, these people are serious about this stuff. And we have to seriously stop those people. Kyle, I want to tell you, uh, you, you, you as usual, you hit it out of the park. Uh, you got about 30 seconds to tell folks about your website and how they can get to your show. And uh, we'll see you next time. I appreciate it. Thank you, Ron. Thanks for having me on today. I, I really enjoyed myself. And yes, folks, if you want to find out more about me, you can go to kylewarrenshow.com. That's kylewarrenshow.com. And you can also hear me nightly on, as Ron was talking about earlier, on the Captain's America Third Watch radio program, 2 to 6 a.m. on the Salem Network. All right. Thanks so much, Kyle. And we will see you next time real soon. Take care, Ron. Take care. And I'll be right back. Ron Edwards, the new voice of America. My name's Joe Biden. All of this is more than half of Americans think President Biden will go down as one of the worst presidents in American history. I keep forgetting I'm president. Constitutional Grounds, the hot air roasted coffee that produces a smoother, richer, healthier, and less acetic coffee. Our unique hot air roasted coffee has a most delicious taste that everyone is raving about. Because you want the best, Constitutional Grounds is the coffee you want in your cup. Simply go to theronedwards.com and click on to the Constitutional Browns coffee display to make your purchase and to be sure to use the RE20 promo code and you will receive a 20% discount. Remember, Constitutional Grounds, the coffee you want in your cup. Nobody wants to get ripped off, broken into, or robbed, but nobody wants to pay a lot of money to have their home protected either. I've got an offer to tell you about to provide home security for your home for less than a dollar a day. For real, with no installation or equipment charges. And this is from a company rated number one by a leading consumer research company. According to the facts, most of you won't even call unless there's a burglary in your neighborhood or something bad happened. So let's give you a reason. Save money. For less than a dollar a day with no other costs, you can get your home secured. Plus, get a lifetime equipment replacement warranty. You need protection for your home. Call the home security hotline right now. 800-430-6715. That's 800-430-6715. Attention timeshare owners. Are you dissatisfied with your timeshare? Tired of the financial burden? Were you misled by the salesperson? Don't want or can't use your timeshare anymore? Then you may qualify for timeshare cancellation. Timeshare Defense Attorneys is the number one affordable fixed fee legal solution in the country with an A-plus Better Business Bureau rating. Our experienced lawyers will evaluate your case and if we take you on as a client, we will work on your case until it's solved in your favor. That's our 100% satisfaction satisfaction guarantee. One of our lawyers will keep you informed in the process, all while protecting your rights, interest, and even your credit. Get the relief you need now from the burden of your timeshare. Call now for a free consultation, and don't forget to ask about our stimulus discount program. Call 800-492-8151. That's 800-492-8151.
listening to the Ron Edwards American Experience. Man, it doesn't get any better than that. How many years can some people exist before they're allowed to be free? How many times can a man turn his head and pretend that he just doesn't see? Are we supposed to take this abuse from federal government? You know, my friends, you are listening to the Ron Edwards American Experience. Thank you so much for this time. And uh, forgive me for this final segment it will be shortened because we took a late a commercial break, but that's okay. We had a great guest. The Constitution is the supreme law of the land. And at Article 4 and Section 4, the Constitution says this, my friends. The United States shall guarantee to every state in the Union a Republican form of government and shall protect each of them against invasion. So why are they allowing the invasion into Texas, Arizona, New Mexico, and elsewhere? So the federal government has an affirmative duty to secure the borders of our country against invasion, right? But old Joe... Uncle Joe Biden and his agents are doing exactly the opposite. Under his direction, agents of the federal government have not only failed to defend America's borders, but they are deeply complicit in aiding and assisting the invading enemies. Now, on the other hand, despite the diligent search, I can find no constitutional provision which authorizes Joe Biden or anyone else to protect the borders of the Ukraine. But for some ungodly reason, Joe Biden has decided that Ukrainian lives and property are worth defending, but American lives and livelihoods are not. In fact, he is willing to risk American lives to defend Ukrainian lives. Ooh, what a predicament. When you consider all this together with lawless vaccine mandates, lockdowns, reckless spending, endangerment of the military, and the abandonment of Americans behind enemy lines, for example, in Afghanistan, where they're being murdered along with Afghanistan Christians, at some point, don't you have to question his allegiance? Shouldn't you? That is, of course, if you have allegiance to this country. Many of his most strident critics such as Sean Hannity and Mark Levin, Marjorie Taylor Greene question Biden's competence and his cognition. But isn't it beyond time to question his motives? This is what I've been asking people for a long time when they've been saying, oh, he's out of his mind. He's the hickety, he's the hickety. No, not really. He's getting what he wants done. Unfortunately, those of us on our side are watching him do it. Now, if he's out of his mind, what does that make the rest of America? If he's out of his mind and he's doing all that he's doing and getting away with it, and all the rest of everyone else on our side is supposed to have their mind, but Joe Biden is getting his way, that says something, doesn't it? Goes back to what I said at the beginning of the broadcast. We have to stand up in mass, 200 million Americans strong against this madness. If not, we will be one nation gone under. I'm Ron Edwards, and now that I see that my time is up, thank you so much for your time. To exit stage right. <laughs> yep, it's time to go, my friends. But guess what? In 21 hours, we shall return. We'll be right back here. Yep, 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 yep. And we look forward to it. Tell your friends, tell your family members, especially the leftist ones, so I'll, we can drive them crazy. I'm Ron Edwards. See you next time. Bye now.